In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Lord, graciously give us your Holy Spirit. Give us your light, your discernment. Kindle our heart with the fire of your Holy Spirit and incline our will toward yours. We ask you this through the powerful intercession of our Lady who is always present among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening, good evening, everybody, and welcome back to uh, the, uh, the Series 4, uh, Video 19. Uh, reading and studying St. John of the Cross, we are in uh, Ascento Mount Carmel, Book 3, Chapter 19 also. So it's Video 19 and Chapter 19. Without further ado, let us resume uh, from where we left it. And here we are. So uh, we are starting Chapter 19. Uh, remember that um, St. John of the Cross is studying how, uh, what are we supposed to do with uh, our, um, regarding our will, how to purify our will, detach it, and, and of course uh, we need the virtue or the act of uh, love for, for that, the theological act of love. Um, he is talking about the uh, danger uh, the danger that we uh, uh, incur when we uh, put, when we rejoice uh, for um, uh, temporal uh, blessings. This is the this chapter uh, 19. So he says, the evils that may befall the soul when it sets its rejoicing, which means it sets its joy, mm, upon temporal bless temporal blessing so we can have we can possess uh, uh i remember always blessing um, in the text is goods no temporal goods so we process goods uh we deal with them on a daily basis uh they can be uh, even of small amount or um, insignificant uh, value in the eyes of the world but they are still uh, ours now Possessing is something exterior from from us of us, and um, the connection then that we establish between our heart and uh, these goods, which is possessing them, not possessing them physically, materially, but it's like being attached to them. So the attachment is the problem. It's the connection between uh, our heart and the goods. So we can have the goods and our heart can be free. And vice versa, we can still have the goods and our heart can be attached. So our heart is not free. Now, the form of attachment here is very practical, expressed in a very practical way. It's to put my joy in, which means to rejoice uh, I would say this is me talking, of course, not him. There is, you know, if, I don't know, your son or daughter have uh, good marks, uh, of course, you, 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 would, you would be happy for them. Uh, you would be happy with them. Uh, and, um, but I think there is an excess in, uh, in that, which then becomes the attachment. It's like I'm waiting for the good notes. And when I have them, I rejoice over the over the I would I would say the reasonable um, uh, the reasonable measure. Uh, it's a little bit like eating, if you want. I'm trying to sort of make it more uh, closer to us in our daily life, and in order for us to relate to what he's saying. Otherwise, 
we can inter interpret what he says um, in uh, in a different way from from his. So, for instance, uh, if I eat, of course, I um, inevitably my palates can appreciate what I'm eating, but between appreciating and uh, transforming um, something that I, I I suddenly I like and I'm eating into gluttony. Uh, the, the 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 difference is is there. You see, this is the going beyond the measure, but I think better said, putting my heart into it. You see, it's like falling to it. You know, when we define uh, sin, um, mortal sin, we give three characteristics, and one of them is the intensity, the the, the the determination that we have in committing the sin. So it's. That determination. I'm putting myself and I'm involving myself in in it. You see, so I'm trying just to ex explain what is this rejoicing upon temporal uh, blessings. Okay, so let us then see what he says. If we had to describe the evils which encompass the soul. When it sets the affections, affections, uh, the will, if you want, the the uh, connection, uh, but of course it's moved by the will, essentially. Uh, the affections of its will upon temporal blessing, neither ink nor paper will, will suffice us, suffice? Uh, us and our time would be too short in order to uh, describe all the evils. For from very small beginnings, a man may attain to great evils. Uh, you see here the wisdom of the pedagogical wisdom of the spiritual master, who uh, John of the Cross. You see, uh, as we do to build up virtue, we start step by step. We try to be faithful in small things. We repeat them and go ahead instead of imposing on ourselves big um, um, endeavors and just trying one or two or three days and then stopping because everything falls apart. Yeah? You go step by step. He is describing here the other route, which is the evil, uh, the root of the, the evils that come from uh, putting our uh, joy uh, or rejoicing in uh, temporal goods. Uh, he says it functions the same. You start small and you're not aware of it, but it grows. Why? Because it strengthens. Repetition in small things strengthens the, the case, and then it grows. Okay, and this theme will will continue. He will he will bang with this uh, theme um, in the coming uh, this chapter and and the following. And it's the same idea that comes back. So from very small and 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 it's something you find in the gospel when the the Lord receives his servant. He says, "Come, faithful servant. You have been faithful on." Uh, little things, I will establish you on bigger things, you see. So faithfulness in small things or failing in small things, that's that's the root, either for virtue or uh, um, vices or, or, or dangers, uh, as we can see here. So from very small beginnings, a man may attain, attain to great evils and destroy great blessings. It's sad. Uh, he's talking to the spiritual person. You and me, he's talking to us, uh, people who pray, people who are committed to the Lord, uh, and so forth. And he says, be careful. He says, be careful. Uh, um, great blessings or great, um, great goods. So it's the quote-unquote accumulation of, of virtue. What is a virtue is repetition of a habit and so forth. So you build a virtue, like when you do uh, bodybuilding or, or, or toning or whatever. You exercise the muscle by repetition, and then you have the toned, toned muscle or toned body and so forth. So here, great blessings. You achieved something. There is growth, but one has to be very careful. Okay? Even as from a spark of fire, so he's comparing this the disaster that great evils, um, um, that a sm small repeated evil can bring uh, uh, great evils, uh, as as a form, as from a spark of fire, if it be not quenched, 
may be enkindled, may be enkindled great fires which set the world ablaze. You see? Now, all these evils have their root and origin in one important evil of a pri privative, hmm, privative uh, kind that is contained in this joy, namely withdrawal from God hmm, to create a distance, to leave, abandon God, hmm, apartarse de Dios. Hmm. So, uh, one important evil, the core of everything, when, when I put my joy into something, he says, in this case, I am abandoning God. So um, you can take an image if you want, but this is my image. Um, I, I don't think you would um, disagree. Um, if you are with God in yourself, in the deep, in the depth of your being, you are uh, close to God, you live with God. But then when you put your joy in something, you come out of this sacred uh, place uh, uh in inside of us being with god we leave we abandon and this is what we're saying here the withdrawal so the main evil the source of all evils is this withdrawal eh? apartarse de dios for even as in the soul that is united with him by the affection of its will uh, there are born all blessings so he's comparing hmm? Like the case of the soul, which is who is united with God, and from this union are born all blessings. Nothing todos los bienes in Spanish. Even so, same. When it withdraws itself, when it abandons the Lord, because the the person is putting the joy um, in something else, in in goods, from him because of this creature affection. When you rejoice for something, it's because of something that is created. So we say, creature, mm? creatura, affection for cre creature. There beset it all evils and disasters proportionately to the joy and affection. Uh, you may add, if you want, the, the, the when he says proportionately, is the intensity, the quality and intensity of this coming out you see it's a little bit uh, i don't know if it can help you when you compare um a venial sin and a, and a grave sin or a mortal sin what is the difference both are sins but the difference is in in the type of sin and also the determination the will uh you know the intensity you put into it so it's the same thing here proportionately to the joy and affection wherewith it is united with creature so you see here, he uses uh, united here, junta, se junta, juntarse, to put yourself with, no, to, to be together. Mm? Uh, so you see, union with God, union with creatures, loving God, loving creatures. You love something, you become that thing. You see, you love God, you are transformed. Love transforms us into God. You love the creature, you are therefore automatically um taken away withdrawn from god you see it's almost physical in his description you have the impression that it's like you are in a place you left the place it's it's almost physical um in in his eyes mm. so uh, just uh, uh, um notice this expression uh, united with the creature it's very interesting here mm. union with god union with the creature se junta con la criatura mm. For this is withdrawal from God. If you have any question, please don't hesitate to interrupt me because, you know, um, I might be um, taking for granted something and maybe it's not it's not obvious for you uh, or you think it's not obvious for others. Hmm? Wherefore, a soul may expect the evils which assail it. Hmm? Wherefore, a soul may expect the evils which assail it to be greater or less according to the greater or lesser degree of his withdrawal of, uh, uh, with, from God. Uh, this is the proportionately, okay? These evils may be extensive or intensive. For the most part, they are both together. 
quantity and or intensity. The privative evil, whence we say arise, other arise, hmm? Pri privative and positive evils, uh, has four degrees. The privative evil has four degrees of, if, if you want, of growth, growth in, in evil, if you want. Each one worse than the other. And when the soul compasses the fourth degree, it will have compassed uh, all the evils and the privities that can be told in this case. It's self-explanatory. These four degrees in evil are well indicated by Moses in Deuteronomy in these words where he says. So this is a quote from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 15. The beloved grew fat and kicked. Empachose el amado y dio trancos hacia atrás kicked back, going backward. He grew fat and became swollen and gross. He forsook, forsook God, his maker, and departed from God, his salvation. This growing fat, so you see, again and again and again, um, he, John of the Cross, uh, is very uh, interesting uh, when he um, comments the scripture, what he sees. Now, he can see certain things. Now, be very careful, as we always said, uh, it's not the only interpretation. It is an interpretation. And since it follows the main two rules, not uh, twisting the text, the letter of it, and respecting our faith when it, it, it is accepted. So, <clears throat> this growing fat of the soul which has uh, which was loved before, before it, grew fat. Indicates absorption in this joy of creatures. You see, absorption. It's like, I don't know, uh, the difference between eating, appreciating a, a meal, and gluttony. It's like, oh, I want more, I want more, and then you have a problem in the stomach and you can't digest the whole night and so forth. You see? So, <clears throat> and hence arises the first degree of this evil. Absorption. The first degree of this evil, namely going backward, which is here kicked, kicked. Diotrancos uh, hacia uh, atrás. He, he kicked uh, towards um, uh, going backward. which is a certain blunting of the mind with regard to God. So he's trying to describe what could be going backward. It's the first step, first evil. An obscuring of the goods of God, like the obscuring of the air by mist. So you see how when we put our joy in something, it sort of obscures the mind, and uh, it's, yeah, it it obscures the mind. It affects the mind, hmm? blunting of, blunting of the mind, hmm? so that it cannot be clearly illumined by the light of the sun. Of course, the light, God's light. For precisely, hmm, he says, when the spiritual person sets his, his rejoicing upon anything anything that is not God, and gives rein to his desire for foolish things, I mean, self-explanatory, he becomes blind as to God. Blind as to God. Why? Because your attention, your focus, your interest, your desire goes, is, is not God. So obviously, you don't see. Uh, it's like when we say sometime, I don't, I don't know, uh, uh, when you fall in love, they say love is, is blind. No, you don't see. Uh, and many other uh, examples. Uh, so 
you 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 lose perception objectivity uh, you lose the perception of what is uh, right uh, the normal functioning of the mind and in this case of course god's light in the mind god's light in the mind god the faith is god's light in our mind he becomes blind as to god and the simple intelligence of his judgment becomes clouded so the person <clears throat> of course is influenced the person is influenced by this love uh, for um, the creature and therefore the judgment is uh, is not is not is impaired if you want okay clouded here he says uh, even as the divine spirit teaches in uh, it's like uh, how when the holy spirit teaches us in the book of wisdom saying the use and association of vanity and scorn obscures good things and inconstant inconstancy of desire overturned and perverts the sense and judgment that are uh, without malice. So initially it's without malice, but then it is overturned and perverted by the association of vanity and scorn, you see. It's 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 simple, uh, almost simple um, um, analysis, psychological analysis. Analysis is not really uh, hugely. It's common sense, I would say, uh, analysis. But you know, common sense sometimes we we don't even think about it. Um, here, the Holy Spirit shows that although there be no malice conceived in the mind of the soul. So he says he says here it's a small thing. There's, so there is no malice conceived there's no uh, evil intention determined clear intention in the point it's just something very small he's saying okay mm. concupiscence and rejoicing in creatures suffices of themselves to create in the soul the first degree of this evil which is the blunting of the mind and the darkening of the judgment by which the truth is understood normally and each thing honestly judge as it is Okay, you might find it excessive what he's saying. I think uh, he speaks also from experience. If we observe ourselves, we will find that what he's saying is correct. Uh, it's a matter also of observation. How sometimes we get sidetracked by something and then our judgment gets uh, is impaired uh, uh, or darkened our understanding of certain things, we lose um, the clarity and so forth. You see, so I don't think it's that harsh mm, uh, or that excessive or radical what he's saying. Um, it's, it's just a matter of experience. Holiness, and, and you can see it in, in, in people around you also. Sometimes it happens, sadly, and so forth. Holiness and good judgment suffice not to save a man from falling into this evil. Why? Because it's very small. He said there is no bad intention. The person is a good person, is a spiritual person, is a committed person, and there is no bad intention. Is The person didn't say, oh, oh yeah, I would like to, to sin. No. It's just giving uh, attention, attachment, uh, and joy, of course, rejoicing uh, from, from something. Something that is legitimate, but because of the attachment, it loses its meaning. You see, it's like eating. Again, I'm taking the, the, the image of eating. Yes, uh, I, will, I will answer your question. Like eating, no? You eat is normal. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's the excess then, which then becomes is gluttony. Why? Because you're putting yourself in, into it. And therefore, it becomes an evil. It's very small. You say, okay, why not serve? I, I serve myself another plate because it's delicious. It is delicious in the beginning, and this is fine. But then there is no need to eat more because I'm I'm not now eating for uh, to help my body. I'm eating because it's delicious. So where am I putting my joy? You see, so appreciating is one thing, and putting the joy is. Is crossing the boundary, I would say. This is me trying to sort of translate what he's saying. I hope I'm not 
um, you know, my, in my intention here is not to change what he's saying. It's just to make it clear. Yes, please go ahead. You just answered what I was going to ah, ask. Okay. 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 So. So again, uh, it's harsh when you think that he's talking about a holy person, a person who has good judgment. You think, well, the person is safe. Or you, if if you if you think you are in that in in these uh, shoes, you say, oh, I'm safe. He says, yeah. I, he says, I understand. There is no bad intention, but you need to be careful because you are opening a door. You are throwing yourself into the lion's mouth, if if you will, so to speak. This is me talking, of course, not him. So you see here, gives way to concupiscence. Concupiscence is there. I appreciate the meal. Uh, we, we, holiness doesn't mean the lack of appreciation of a meal or beauty or, or anything. Uh, you see, um, that would be uh, weird, I would say. That would be uh, strange. Um, and many times God doesn't remove, uh, if we draw closer to him, he doesn't necessarily remove concupiscence. Concupiscence is an inclination. But an inclination is not sin. But moving then from the inclination into coming out of myself into that this, this creature, this desire of the creature, putting my joy in it, I'm not anymore in God, I'm outside, you see? And it's a small thing. And no bad intention in the beginning. So if he gives a way to concupiscence or rejoicing in temporal things, for this reason, God warned us by uttering these words, through Moses, you shall take no gifts. You shall take no gifts presents, which blind even the prudent. Why? We will see why. Uh, this is, um, uh, I think it's it's um, um, in Exodus twenty three eight, but um, it's. An advice given to the wise people who are governing uh, the people of God. So this is about the leaders, uh, if you want, and the judges. So God gives this uh, advice to the judges saying, don't take any gift. Why? Because then your judgment, your evaluation will be impaired, will be, will be blurred. And this was addressed particularly to those who were to be judges. For these have, uh, for these have need to keep their judgment clear and alert, which they will be unable to do if they covet, covet, uh, and rejoice in gifts. What does um, I mean covet? Uh, how can you covet. say covet? Covet. Say again? covet. Covet, uh, yeah, but uh, the meaning, if, if we find a synonymous. Envious of. Envy? Envious of. Envious of, yeah, okay. Mm, yes, yeah. see, if they covet, covet and rejoice in gifts. You desire, but then you, you, you really, it becomes an act. It's not just uh, just having something. And for this cause, likewise, God commanded Moses to appoint judges for, um, from those who abhorred avarice. Avarice? So, you choose the judges from people who abhorred, like, consider it evil, uh, bad, uh, disgust, were disgusted by it, by avarice, which is the uh, desire to to um to i don't know to get money to 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 possess things and so forth so that their judgment should not be blunted with the lust of uh, the passions and thus he says not only that they should not desire it which is in the heart but that they should abhor it hmm. of course i hear you here saying okay well then well, what does it mean i have to uh, abhor the delicious meal or abhor when my uh, daughter or my son is uh, getting good marks or, or su uh, is succeeding in something. 
I just can I this is me talking of course uh, I, I can only say we never know the exact good uh, what um, what could happen uh, and what is really uh, something good in the sense that uh, where will, will it lead we don't know you see so one has to be uh, prudent and try as much as possible to stay in the grace of God not knowing uh, what can happen you see have the humility to say okay yes he or she succeeded yes fine um, I can rejoice yes but uh, you remember the uh, mother of uh, um, the uh, king uh, louis the ninth the french king his mom is uh, spanish I, I probably mentioned that before no she said to him i prefer to see you dead rather than seeing you sinning ah, that's strong education no this is the mother imagine that no? i prefer to see you dead rather than seeing you sinning so um <clears throat> it's along these lines if 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 you will we don't know what is really good and how can things end for if a man is to be perfectly defended from the affection of love he must preserve an abhorrence abhorrence of it defending himself by means of the one thing against its contrary in the beginning, when you work the virtue, etc., when you have a vice, you try always to work the contrary. To uh, how can you win against a vice? How can you destroy a vice? It's by activating the opposite virtue. Saint John of the Cross talks about this. In uh, actually, it's 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 a witness. Uh, I did mention him before. Elise, Eliseus uh, El Elijah of the uh, martyrs. Um, he's a witness. He lived with him, uh, with St. John of the Cross, and we have his uh, witness uh, not in the actual uh, complete works of St. John of the Cross or collected works of John of the Cross, the grey edition that uh, we all have, but it's rather the uh, the other edition, the, uh, the, the Alison Pierce, and I think, if I'm not wrong, it's in the... Um, a third volume of Alice in Peace, you have these, um, um, I don't remember, 16, I think, um, points that Eliseus um, um, mentions about St. John of the Cross. He, he says that John of the Cross used to talk of, about how to uh, conquer uh, a, a virtue, uh, how to control or finish with a vice. It, well, it was to, to practice the first step, and the first way, and it's a longer, more painful, it's to practice the opposite virtue. So here he's mentioning it, no? defending himself by means of the one thing against its contrary. The reason why the prophet Samuel, uh, for example, was always so upright and enlightened uh, uh, a judge is that, as he said in the book of Kings, uh, he had never received a gift uh, from any man. Uh, first book of uh, Kings, chapter 12, um, verse 3. Now, that was the first degree. Very small, no bad intention, and you see how it will lead us. The second degree, I know it's a bit grim, all this, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's knowing ourselves. It's about knowing ourselves, and it is useful, I think, at, at all levels. Uh, remember, Therese of Avila in the seventh, man seventh mansion, this is the only place where she will mention uh, Solomon the, the king, uh, King Solomon, how he ends. Uh, he started very well, as he says here, a good person, a spiritual person, a wise person, and so forth, and then um, he puts his heart in, in other things, and of course, ends up badly. So, may the Lord protect us and keep us in his grace and keep our heart with him. The second degree of this primitive evil arises from <clears throat> the first, arises from the first. So it's connected. You see how one leads to the other, which is indicated in the words following the passage uh, already quoted, namely, he grew fat and became swollen and gross and gross. Uh, 
And thus, the second degree is the dilation of the will through the acquisition of greater liberty in temporal things. So it becomes bigger, the will, and the liberty uh, grows liberty in dealing uh, in being attracted and putting our joy in temporal things which consists in no longer attaching so much importance to them it's like yes you don't you don't think it's it's a big deal mm. nor troubling oneself about them nor esteeming so highly the joy and pleasure that come from uh, created uh, goods it's like yeah you you're not considering it as grave if you want or or as uh, as bad so you then you you continue you de it develops it develops it becomes a, a vice it, it be and it opens um uh, as you, you can see here it grew fat and became swollen and gross no it sort of inflates the will in this direction strengthens the will in this direction remember always a vice the definition of the vice and the definition of a virtue have one thing in similar, which is what? The habit. And the creation of a habit comes from the repetition of an act. But one is a good habit, which is then the virtue, and one is a bad habit, then it, it's a, it becomes a vice. But both are, um, I would say, um, brought to life or exist uh, through... The repetition of of the act and here i don't care anymore the person doesn't care anymore continues to do it it's finished now it becomes a habit sadly so it's just one step more development of the same first one from a small thing he said it becomes a big fire and this will have a a rise arisen 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 Arisen. Arisen. Horrible. Sorry. Uh, and this will have arisen in the soul. Thank you. Uh, from its having in the first place given rain to rejoicing. For through giving way to it, the soul has become swollen with it. So it's like, okay, fine. I can repeat. As is said in that passage, and that fatness of rejoicing and desire has mused it to dilate and extend its will more freely toward the creatures. You see, more freely. The One is confirmed, I would say, quote-unquote, in this uh, bad habit. And this brings with it great evils. For this second degree causes the soul to withdraw itself from the things of God. Obviously, you can't be in two places at the same time. Either you are with, you are dedicating time and energy to that, the creatures, or you are dedicating time and energy to God. You, you, can't, you can't have one leg here and one leg there. For this second degree causes the soul to withdraw itself from the things of God and from holy practices and to take no pleasure in them. It's tragic when you think about that. Huh? It's tragic, no? Take no pleasure in them. I used to rejoice, but I used to find my, um, my joy. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are feeling something strongly, but you find your joy in serving God, in doing certain things and so forth, and then you reach a point where you find your joy in a, in in goods created goods and then god bye bye because it takes pleasure in other things and devotes itself continually to many imperfections and follies and to joys and vain pleasures i think it's self explanatory i i i don't think now it's just a development of it um, and when this second degree is consummated it's like well confirmed rooted rooted in this in this uh, attitude or these acts it withdraws with withdraws a man wholly from the practices which he followed continually and makes his whole mind 
and covetousness to be given to secular things. The desire and the mind now are moved towards secular things. So in a way, and I, I'm always asked this question, it's like, are, are we ever safe um, uh, if we are advanced? Is there a way to come back? Of course, of course. Uh, even Adam, who was in the presence of God, so to speak, united to God, uh, was free. And this freedom, unfortunately, led him, uh, used badly, uh, led him to, to, to sin. Um, so it's the same. Uh, for a person who is growing, we don't lose our freedom. So it's important to stay alert and prudent. Uh, otherwise, it's not good. And those who are affected by this second degree not only have their judgment and mind darkened so that they cannot recognize truth and justice like those who are in the first degree. So not only that, but... They are also very weak and lukewarm and careless in acquiring knowledge of and in practicing truth and justice. Do you see? It's just worse, the worsening of the situation. The uh, it's it becomes it's established now in us. It takes roots in us, even as Isaiah says of them um, in these words. They all love gifts and allow themselves to be carried away by rewards. And they judge not the orphan, neither doth the cause of the widow come in unto them uh, that they may give heed to it. So you lose, you lose um, this being weak and lukewarm, remember this, and careless in acquiring knowledge. And practicing truth and justice. All this goes. And there is a parable, I think, in the gospel. It says, instead of, he's talking about the leaders, instead of taking care of the persons who are, they are entrusted to, uh, they start to beat them in the gospel. It says, the, the word, is, I find it a bit uh, too much, but when you think about it, if you don't, if you are not taking care of, it's like you neglect them. So what is happening then to them? They, you are responsible. <laughs> this comes not to pass in them without sin especially so now remember initially he said it's very light there is no intention so yes there is sin but it's very light now he says now there is sin now it's because become, it's becoming serious now the person is starting to sin i mean seriously clearly you can't you can't deny it. especially when to to do these uh, things is incumbent upon them because of their office. So, uh, when you do, well, sorry, I, 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 I didn't un interpret correctly. Um, this comes to pass, which is what he says here. No, uh, they uh, judge not the orphan, neither uh, do the the cause of the widow come unto them, etc. Says this. Is not happening and of course this is a sin this is a sin not to pay attention not to judge um, in a fair way and or take care of the orphan and the, and the widow and so forth uh, especially when to do these things is incumbent upon them because of their office for those who are affected by this degree are not free from malice while in the beginning he said there is no bad intention and there is no malice here he says you can't consider that there is no malice so now situation changed as are those of the first degree and thus they withdraw themselves more and more from justice and virtues since their will reaches out more and more in affection for uh, creatures now try to remember where we are in, on the journey the, the first the first stage is uh, addressed in ascent of mount carmel uh, this is what we are supposed to do in a center of Mount Carmel in order to leave this uh, love of uh, creatures and move on to the love of God. Then you have this first liberation given to us uh, and described in, uh, in the Dark Knight Book 1. So the person now is considered as spiritual. So we have normally a virtue growing. Uh, effort um, being uh, persevering in it 
and so forth. Being very focused on God, having um, a certain closeness uh, to God through the uh, uh, the um, theological virtues, but still we are not yet purified to the roots. We are not yet purified to the roots. So what he's describing in book two and three, and we are in book three here, is how what am I supposed to do in order to prepare myself for a stronger intervention of God? Remember that. So. I am not the one who will uh, transform myself. It's the grace of God. So my situation right now is that I am a spiritual person in the sense that I'm not anymore in, attracted by um, uh, the, the goods, the, the, the world, uh, the material goods and so forth. But still, my purification God's work in me hasn't reached yet the roots of my being. So I am in a very delicate position. I am in a delicate position. I still have in me roots that needs to be purified. I'm not aware of them. I didn't see them necessarily, but they need to be purified. So I need to do something in order to keep the pressure and maintain the, the correct direction, eventually God then will start to uh, purify me in a deeper way, in a stronger way, go, reaching out to, to the roots of my being. So this is where we are right now. So by the advice he's giving, or almost, I would say, scaring us by the description of how we can fall, it's important to remember that not everything depends on us in the sense that in the sense of the um the final goal which is the purification the big purification you see that's that's very important here it depends on me to do what he's saying not keep the focus on god um be united to god not to find my joy in 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 uh, creatures and so forth but this is not the final answer this is not the achievement this is not yet holiness because it's god who realizes holiness in me so it's very important to remember that because we might fall into um a sort of thinking that uh we are in full control of the outcome and uh, if we avoid uh, uh, falling as he's describing then then we are fine no it it is good and and it's our duty to do it it will keep us closer to god it it keeps us maintaining this pressure but you need to remember that eventually we are waiting for god's new intervention deeper intervention for purification and it's him who achieves holiness not us of course we've done our part and because we have done our part we sort of open the door for his action but it's his action that create that uh, enacts or realizes the the, the deep purification and 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 uh, the, later on uh, uh, holiness. Okay, do you see what I'm trying to say? Because we can fall easily into thinking, oh, okay, fine. So we are between a bad and evil, uh, a good good and evil. Sorry. Um, uh, good being with staying with God and evil is like paying attention to that. So I will be very vigilant. Yes, I need to be vigilant. Mm. He's not saying stop being vigilant and I'm not saying stop being vigilant. But what I'm saying is that even if you are vigilant and you need to be vigilant, you are only doing your part and you are ex waiting for God's intervention. You see what I'm trying to say? Huh? So I'm just placing the teaching in its correct place. Mm. Uh, otherwise you are um, thinking that you are in full control and therefore you are imposing on yourself a huge burden. More than the burden that he's describing, the, what we are supposed to do. I hope, if it's not clear what I'm saying, please um, uh, take your mic and, and, and speak. Because that's this point is very important. Uh, how do we read Ascent of Mount Carmel? Book one and book two and three. Book one, for the sense purification of the purification of the sense and book two and three for the deepest purification you see so um remember please remember that point now um hi rebecca
Wherefore, the characteristics of those who are in this second degree are great lukewarmness in spiritual things and failure to do their duty by then. They practice them from formality, they, they, they practice the good things just out of formality. It's like, um, you know, you're, you're used to do it, you have to do it, and uh, you just, um, it's formality. Uh, or compulsion. I feel I have to do it, so I'm doing it. Or from the habit which they have formed, because I continue on the same direction. I, or I, I did it already for, I don't know, a few months or a few years, and I'm continuing uh, keeping the momentum, if you want, mm. rather than because they love them. And be careful here, because they love them doesn't mean because they feel the love of them. To love is an act, and to feel is, an, is something different. What we want is the act. I'm saying this because uh, I'm preparing the the continuation, and and sometimes we think that to love means oh I I, I love it I feel oh, I, it's it's fabulous etc. Not necessary. You can be very virtuous, you can be very fervent, but not you know uh, how can I describe that? Uh, not not uh, effervescent, no, not not like. Uh, bubbly 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 no it's like mm. no uh, it's it's you're just doing it and, and this is what counts you see now the third degree of the that, that was number two now the third so let us see what will happen after it's um <laughs> we are uh, witnessing the disaster now how it unfolds the third degree of this primitive evil is a complete falling away from god Horrible, no? Uh, St. Therese of the Child Jesus attended uh, uh, one year. At, um, you know, they have retreats as nuns. You have retreats. And um, one year, the priest, um, you know, the priest is, 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 he is who he is and he does what he usually does. And, uh, you know, sometimes he, you're not aware that you are dealing with contemplative uh, nuns. So um, the topic you are addressing is rather for uh, your parish or for your mission uh, rather than the contemplative um, uh, nun. So he was talking a lot about uh, sin and it made her sick. It made Therese sick. She couldn't bear it because he was describing sin and how sin was ugly and so forth. And she, she was like uh, uh, in total um, uh, distraught. Mm? So <clears throat> just in case it helps. Uh, the third degree of this primitive evil is a complete falling away from God. Neglect to fulfill his law in order not to lose worldly things and blessings. Wow. You see how here um, you neglect to fulfill his law. Why? Because you are now busy with your own business, so to speak, business, and you don't want to lose certain worldly things. So instead of this vertical attitude, the theological vertical attitude, now the calculation, the evaluation of what am I supposed to do, what will I do, is more horizontal, you see? So <clears throat> I'm, I'm now... Uh, I don't want to lose my worldly things and blessings. So now I'm giving time, energy, and calculation. Now you are you are uh, seeing uh, uh, what what you have to give, how much time, how much energy and uh, attention, and so forth, and relapse into mortal sin through covetousness. Covet covetousness. Yeah, you see, uh, horrible, 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 horrible. Anyway. May God protect us. And this third degree is described in the words following the passage quoted above, which says, He forsook God, his maker. Deuteronomy 32, 15. He forsook God, his maker. 
in this degree are included all who have the faculties of the soul, all the people who have the faculties of the soul absorbed uh, in things of the world and in riches and in commerce. In such a way, in such a way, you see, they have them in such a way that they care nothing for fulfilling the obligation of the law of God. So it's finished now. God is comes second. Yes, please go ahead. Um, he says in such a way, and above he said in order to, does it is he assuming a certain intention in the sense that, you know, I can imagine a lot of people do this without being aware that this is what they're doing, right? Because they don't pay attention or they don't think about it or even if they've been told it's not really sunk in and you know remember we're talking here to the spiritual person okay who already so uh, in a way should know better of course yeah but in the same time he answers your question he said now the 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 judgment is impaired the clarity of the mind uh, goes it's automatic the more i invo regardless of where of where i am in spiritual life or non spiritual life my involvement in something affects my yeah. uh, my vision. So then you think of the culpability in that sense, no? There is no culpability here, to a certain extent. Why? Because of blindness. Uh, I don't know. I, I I don't know. I I don't know what to say. Yeah, of course. Uh, but why? It increased or decreased? No, because the blindness increased when the first with his first steps that he said in the first degrees where the mist sort of comes over and then yeah yeah but non nonetheless uh, a mortal sin is a mortal sin or something uh, grave is something grave um objectively grave uh pfft. i'm just wondering <laughs> yeah no he's not he's not he's not talking directly uh, um of the how the culpability of the person here the maybe he will after i don't remember now um i, I don't think so he does um he's just describing how it happens now is the, is the person aware mm -hmm. i don't know few small glimpses from time to time but the this the person is so established in new habits that the glimpses are very short. They don't have any influence, any impact on the person. Um, I don't know. Uh, this requires, um, I don't know, wisdom. I, I, I don't I don't have this capacity. Uh, in this degree are included all who have the faculties of the soul absorbed in things of the world, which is a consequence of the, the previous two degrees and commerce in such a way so yeah, so he's describing what makes what is the difference between number three and number number two, uh, the previous one is in such a way uh, they are not fulfilling their obligations. There are obligations and uh, they are not fulfilling them. They stopped fulfilling them because allegedly we are talking to a spiritual person who then had habits, good habits, a d different style of life. So now they left that. Yeah. I don't know. For me, it's already horrible. So in such a way that they care nothing for fulfilling the obligations of uh, the law of God. So it's you lose the, the sensitivity uh, of the of the conscience. Uh, it loses its sort of sharpness and perception. Uh, it, you, it becomes what? Gross? How do, how do you describe that? It becomes uh, thick, if you want. You don't have this perception, this uh, awareness, uh, this being alert. Uh, you sense things, etc. You know, when, 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 if a person is um, with, the, with God, the Holy Spirit works better uh, with this person and leads better this person. So you have this sort of alertness and perception of of god uh, very much awake awaken uh, while here 
uh, when you leave this presence, of course, the Holy Spirit is not there uh, anymore, uh, is not acting directly anymore on the person, on the person, and therefore uh, you lose this. Uh, your conscience is not working anymore the same. Uh, you dumb, the, the, you dumb the the uh, the conscience. You don't want to listen to it anymore. You sort of bury it, uh, and then you are out of your outside. You leave and and go outside. Uh, the degree of culpability that that that's God's business. I don't know. Um, of course, it's grave. Of course, as you can see, if one small thing became a a, a tragic end uh, or a tragic step. Um, okay, is that okay? Now, uh, and they are very forgetful and dull. You see, dull. That's the. You, you, you don't have this uh, alertness, beautiful alertness, if the Holy, when the Holy Spirit is there, uh, with respect to, to that which touches their salvation. You see, it's uh, we went very far now. We, we are very far from God now. And have co a correspondingly a greater ardor and shrewdness with respect to the things of the world. And this is where he will... Uh, Recall the expression from the uh, gospel, but in a slightly different way. Look how he will say it here. Uh, so much so that in the gospel, Christ calls them ch children of the this world. While in fact, they were children of the light. Uh, we usually say children of the world, doomed, and then children of the light. While here he says they were children of the light, they became children of the world. So that's a, a different reading of the text. Fascinating, interesting, and and uh, yes, of course, why not? So, uh, and says of them <clears throat> uh, that they are more prudent and acute in the affairs, business, than, than are the children of light uh, in their own. Uh, so he's, um, it's a different reading of the text. Fine, uh, that's it's okay. I mean, he's, he's entitled. And, uh, who are we to, to say anything here? And thus they are as nothing in God's business. You are now into other business, not, not God's business. Whereas in the world's business, they are everything. And these are truly the avaricious who have extended and dispersed their desire and joy on things created. Extended and dispersed their desire. Uh, and joy on things created, and and this with and this with such affection, always the 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 quality or the intensity, mm. uh, with such affection that they cannot be satisfied. Of course, uh, the the thirst for for power, the thirst for money, the thirst for uh, pleasure. I don't know. It's 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 you can't stop it. It grows and 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 it's endless. On the contrary, their desire and their thirst grow all the more because they are um, fur further withdrawn from the only source that could satisfy them, which is God. Mm. They are even further now from the only source that could satisfy them, God. Mm. A, a, a beautiful definition here of, of, of God. Uh, the source that can satisfy us and the happiness, the true, true happiness, true, true joy. <clears throat> for it is of these that God himself speaks through Jeremiah saying they have forsaken me who am the fountain of living water and they have digged you don't say dug digged is allowed in all English dug why he, why he wrote digged here well in my uh, while it says dug yeah, but is it allowed in English language? Dig? I've never heard it digged. Okay, let us put it dog then. In... I left it as it is, but I, I, it sounded strange, but who am I to judge about English? Uh, who, uh, who, you see, say, they left God, who is the fountain of living water, and dug to themselves broken cisterns that uh, that can hold no water. This is a very famous uh, text from um, Jeremiah 2.13, 2, Jeremiah. And this is the reason why the covetous man 
finds nothing among the creature wherewith he can quench his thirst, but only that which increases it. He doesn't find anything, but it's like you, you have a an increase of thirst. These persons are they that fall into countless kinds of sin through love of temporal uh, goods. Uh, again, blessing is goods, bienes temporalis. And the evils which afflict them are innumerable. So it's easy, it's opened completely, and now we are, I don't know how you want to describe that, hell. And of these, David says, transierunt in affectum cordis, which is. They have passed into the affection of the heart, uh, which is Psalm, let me tell you which Psalm, uh, 72, 7, 72, 7. Okay. Well, I, I'm afraid it's better to, to stop here uh, in order to um, leave uh, the rest for next time. Okay. So I'm uh, I'm sorry for this um, horrible uh, experience here that we're having uh, of the description of horror, growing horror, uh, when we are still in uh, degree three. So next time we will go into a fourth degree. I didn't know that there is a fourth degree, uh, but there is. So, I mean, worse than this situation I meant. Um, so... Um, any question regarding what we uh, saw uh, today in this lesson? Uh, any reaction? Uh, I, I gave my reactions. I am uh, horrified. I'm horrified uh, feeling my own weakness. I mean, it's uh, it's like, my Lord, one can fall. Uh, Very easily. Say again? Very easily, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a small thing it becomes. So uh, it's like scary, very scary. I don't know. How do you feel about that? Um, and it's also about other bro our brothers and sisters. It's not. It's all about us, but also other people. It's rather the spiritual people we are talking about here, because that's the the object of uh, not the other mentions, the mentions zero or one. Uh, Trees of Avila talks about. Okay, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you very much, and until next time.